Thanks for coming. Hi. Hi. So, they know our background. I don't know if they know our background, but... Uh, in brief, Sammy's father is a doctor who saved my son Jake's life. 45 years ago. Consequently, Jake and Sammy literally grew up together. And I have known Sammy practically since he's been born. I, um, it, I know it takes a lot of courage to go back and look, you know, because you never know if you're going to like it, you know, or, you know, or like yourself. And um, I'm wondering, um, you know, how did it how did it feel? Did you did you get through it okay? Are you proud of it? Are are you? Uh, how does it feel right now? I have mixed emotions. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you you always want to do some things, certain things over again, but uh, we really were uh, we were really doing everything that Mike Nichols asked us to do, and we did something that was very rarely done. I didn't know it then, uh, but we rehearsed for almost a month in a room. Uh, How long is the average rehearsal? There, there usually isn't any on a movie, you know. Uh, and uh, by the time we started shooting, uh, we could have opened it as a play, because we knew every line. and. He blocked it in about the third week. He brought in the brilliant uh, uh, Surtees to, uh, uh, to, you know, they were blocking the shots so that when we uh, started the first day of shooting, it was like another day of rehearsal. And uh, we literally just did everything that, that Mike asked us to do. So that's Mike's performance up there. Yeah. Or each one I did, did say. So you see Nichols when you're watching yourself? Yes, yes, at times. That's when I least like myself. <laughs> <laughs> is it is Nichols in the in the behavior or the emotion or the the humor? Where exactly do you does he come through? It's it's such an uh, an unusual experience. Uh, this film, uh, briefly. Uh, this, this is from a book and by Charles Webb, uh, who's no longer with us, but he, he wrote a, a book about a track star, a debating star, uh, uh, literally a six foot uh, Robert Redford type. In fact, uh, uh, Larry Terman, the producer, the late Larry Terman said that uh, when Nichols said uh, the dream cast, uh, when they first read the book, they wanted the dream cast. It would be, uh, 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 I can't remember. Uh, was Doris Day? Doris Day was going to be uh, Mrs. Robinson. And uh, I think he wanted, who was it? Uh, what was it? The, no, the, the fa my father and mother. Uh, Oh, no. it would be, uh, oh no, he, he thought I would be Redford, he thought that Catherine would be uh, Candace Bergen, and I think he was thinking of Ronald Reagan, and and that was the first, but Nichols, I mean, I found out really what this movie was about, years later when Nichols, uh, a, a few months in fact, I think before he died, he literally talked about, uh, he didn't realize what he was doing because he, he was, he miscast me and uh, he could have changed the name, he could have called me Benjamin Levine, but, <laughs> but he kept it the same and it was, it was Gentile, it was Jew versus Gentile. He was uh, from Germany. Uh, he came to this country and only spoke German. He had had scarlet fever uh, and the medication they gave him caused all the hair on his body to disappear. 
so he felt like uh, an outsider and uh, he didn't quite understand what he was doing uh, he he looked at Redford he looked at all these actors for over uh, two years I think and uh, Larry Terman uh, the producer said that and I didn't know this again until I read it in the paper that when Catherine Ross and I uh, auditioned it was uh, after he he had looked at just about everybody he could look at. We were the last. And I'm, <clears throat> I maintain that if we had tested the first week, we would not have gotten far. Mm -hmm. Because at, after, it was not a good screen test, and <laughs> it went poorly. <laughs> another story. But uh, uh, they looked at each other, according to Terman, they looked at, in those days, the rushes, the, the next day they, you know, kind of put it together and looked at it on the screen when it was over, this bad screen test for both of us. Uh, he says, what do you think? And they were depressed because it wasn't good. And and Larry Terman said later, years later, I read about it. He said, well, we've looked at everybody. For, you know, we might as well just shelve it or, you know, what else are we going to do? Uh, might as well go with them or not do it. And that's literally how it happened. <laughs> and, and then I think it's important, um, tells you what this movie is about. What, what happened when Mike Nichols called you to tell you that you got the part? Well, um, I tested. I was doing a play off Broadway. And I, uh, I was just starting to get somewhere after almost 10 years of typing <laughs> for a living, like all of the other actors doing different jobs. And I get this off-Broadway play, and I, I got an, an award for it. And uh, it, was, it was a stunning achievement, as far as I was concerned. And I hear that he wants me to test for this thing, and he was a, a legendary. He was the leading uh, director of the day. And I talked to him on the phone, and I read the book, and uh, uh, I didn't want to come out. I turned it down. I was in New York, and I didn't want to come to L.A. to, to screen test. And he called me, and he said, why don't you screen test? Why don't you want to screen test? And I said, you know, I like to think of myself as a character actor, but then I can't play that goy, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I can't be Robert Redford. Uh, and he said, did you think the book was funny? And I said... Yeah, uh, he said. Uh, uh, he says, "Well, maybe, maybe he's a Jewish inside." <laughs> anyway, he talked me into going out. It was a ten-page scene. My understudy took over the role off Broadway. I flew out. Couldn't barely memorize it all. Catherine Ross, I had met, and uh, we are sitting there talking the day before the test. And he keeps focusing on Catherine Ross. And I say, I get it. Uh, I'm here to <laughs> give him an excuse to, I think he has the hots for cats. And he keeps saying, you really remind me of my first wife. And, uh, and he was flirting. Uh, I said, that's all right. Uh, you know, he, he has a right to. So uh, the next day, we tested. Went, as I said, it went very badly. I, How did you know? Did you know in the moment? Yeah, I mean, it was so bad that uh, <laughs> the crew knew it was bad. I mean, <laughs> I mean this, this was, we couldn't get through, it was 10 pages. With a, a state of eye trying to memorize it. And he wanted to do it all in one shot with the camera there and coming around here and going to see if we could do movies, I guess. And we could barely get through. And at the end, I shook hands with people and... You know, and there was a prop guy there, and I guess I had my hand in my pocket. I pulled my hand out to thank you for the day. I was almost apologizing for wasting their time. And I took my hand in my pocket, and these tokens fell on the ground. And they were little in those days. And I had all these subway tokens. And I went to bend down. He says, I'll get them. And he bent down, and he picked them all up. And 
he looked at me and he just said, Here, kid, you're going to need these. <laughs> Have you heard these before? No. no. Good. All right, good. I want to make, because there's so much to talk about. I want to make sure that we're getting what they, what they don't know. So, and, you know, I go back to the show. With, in fact, Elizabeth Wilson, uh, who plays my mother in this, was in the play I was doing, uh, the young Broadway play. And I came back, I said, Elizabeth, don't worry, I'm not going to leave the show, I'm not getting that part. And uh, weeks go by, and then I hear that he, uh, my agent calls and says, he wants you to call him uh, tomorrow at 9 in the morning. And I said, well, she says, well, this could be, no, I said, why? Because usually if you don't get a part, they don't call you to tell you to get the part. And so it was. Uh, this is strange. And the next morning I called at 9 in the morning, but I called at my 9 in the morning. <laughs> and he meant his 9, so it was, I woke him up. And uh, it's one of those things that you never forget. And I said, hi, Mike. Uh, uh, and I, you know, being an actor, I thought, oh, God, if he wasn't going to give me the part, if I woke him up, he's going to change his mind. <laughs> and I said, uh, he told me to call you. He says, yeah. And there was just a silence. It was a sound of silence. It went on forever. And, and I remember, you know, he had a kind of lilting way of talking. And he said, uh, well, you got it. And I didn't say a word. And he said, he says, you don't sound very excited. And I said, because when it happens in real life, it's not like the movies. <laughs> they're just blank. There's, 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 there's a, you know, a super reality to it, which is like meaning there's no reality to it. In my case. I said, no, uh, 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 thank you. Uh, just, and I was going with a girl then, uh, who later became my first wife, and she was making breakfast. And I hung up the phone and she was across the way at the stove and I said I, I, I he said I got it and she just turned toward me and said depressed she says I, I knew you would get, you were going to get it <laughs> and because she realized that I was going to come to LA mm -hmm. she was a ballet dancer she was going to stay in New York and it was going to separate us mm -hmm. which it did but, I mean, we still got married uh, later. Uh, but it's, it's the most unusual feeling. I really thank you for being here. Uh, I didn't, you know, I saw The Graduate. Uh, they had it outside. I love this theater. And I, I just happened to see it there. And Sam and, his, and I are trying to write a memoir of, of, of my life. If not now, when? <laughs> uh, uh, we might call it, I'm a little worried about my future, I'm 86. <laughs> that hasn't changed. Uh, and, uh, and then Sam thought, you know, maybe we should do something like this. Uh, he has things in the movie, I mean, it's 50 years old, that movie. It's impressionistic at times. I mean, when uh, you know, when she knows that uh, I'm mean, going to bed with her mother, and she and I, I she kicks me out, or, or and bankrupt them, and I'm out in that hallway, and it goes on forever. I mean, he has so many shots. He was in his mind. He was not. He, he was brave, and that's what made him, uh, I think, a brilliant director. This isn't a comedy. This isn't a drama. This isn't a. This is, it, it is whatever it is. And though we had memorized it every day we came to work, and he was like, he didn't know what he was going to do. He, he hadn't planned it. Even though he knew the lines, even though he knew the blocking, he would change anything at a moment's notice. He, he, he really was like a painter. He was just painting every day. I just think he was, you know, what a brave man he was. How did you know this is your first movie? Kind of. Kind of. This is your first starring. Mayor 
first American. Okay, okay. So did you feel that you knew what you were doing? Did you feel that you were in control? What do you mean? Well, when you go when you're when you're working on this movie, did you feel did you feel confident? I'm aware when I was watching, I told Lisa, my, my wife, uh, and I turned to her. I said, I remember every day as we're watching. I said, I know what I was trying to do, what I was trying to do there, and uh, I didn't know what Nichols was doing. I only know knew what he wanted me to do at the very beginning of the movie. He said something later. He says, I heard him say it. Uh, the first half of this movie, he's passive. The second half, he's active. And at the beginning, I'm just a piece of luggage. He sees, you know, he sees me going. I'm, I'm being pulled down the, that escalator. All I know is he's telling me, go down the escalator and just don't think about anything. And, and I'm trying not to think about anything, which is very hard. <laughs> and, and then he has me coming around, checking him. I don't know what he's about. And then he has me, you know, coming, the door's open. Everything is being done for me. I'm just like a piece of luggage. And I just take it to the car. And then that, looking at the fish tank was the first day of shooting. And he just said, you know, study the fish. I didn't know why. <laughs> but he, in his mind, he was thinking, uh, I'm just, you know, I'm underwater. I'm, I'm, I, I think. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm out of it. I'm, I, and even the, 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 the stuff in the pool and everything, he's, 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 can you put it into words? Did, um, he's, a, he's an object, and then he has to come yes. alive. Yes. Yeah. Did, did you feel that Nichols felt that he made the right decision casting you? Such an interesting question. It was the best rehearsal I had ever had. I had rehearsals in the theater. But this rehearsal was extraordinary. He let us do everything and anything we wanted. We, it, you'd think of something, and he would uh, he would say, go ahead and do it. It was He was so open. Uh, he, he, he let us, he wanted us to improvise. Uh, he, he was so smart. He said, uh, when he asked me, uh, have you ever been to, do you think he's a virgin when we were in rehearsal? And I said, if I had to guess yes or no, I would guess no, I don't think he's a, I think he's a virgin in the sense that he, it's the first time he's ever screwed his, his mother's best friend and his, <laughs> and his daughter. Uh, but, uh, and then he said to me another time, uh, uh, he said, uh, I can't remember. Um, he said, uh, he says, do, do you think that he, uh, do you think he, he knows what he wants to do? And I said, well, I think he's, he doesn't. I think he's, 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 he's not, he's not alive, he's not, uh, I, can't, I can't remember exactly, but he, he's, he asked me certain questions and I gave the answers as best as I can. I wish I could remember that one other question, but my short-term memory is gone, which has not allowed my long-term memory to for me to remember. But, but the joy of the rehearsal process. Yeah, it was, it was wonderful. Yeah. It was, yeah. it was, and then, uh. Oh, but I know what you're asking. Yeah. So, so we start. I, he's he's been told by people. That's all I can ascertain now. As wonderful as the rehearsal was, once we started shooting, he was off and on. Because I think we're, people were telling him, "Why did you cast that, right. that right. guy?" Right. Uh, I know that after the movie was finished, I found out later. They had screening rooms, and I was living in New York, and I had screening rooms, you know, the Bel Air circuit here, mm. uh, and people would sh were showing it before it opened in screening rooms, and, and people constantly would say to him or the producer, it's brilliant, this movie, it's a shame you miscast the lead. <laughs> um, and, and, he, and he was right. Uh, he, he did miscast it. Uh, Correctly. Yes. <laughs> and he, he, Realizing it, yeah. I think he said later, you know, this man who 
spoke that he was that I was. He realized why he cast me years later, uh, and that was he says I think I was casting my alter ego. Yeah, because I was someone who was, uh, you know, not very attractive, and, and uh, in fact I said to Lisa, I said, so look at all the acting I had, <laughs> and I think they were kind of always trying to cover it up, uh, and uh, I still have it. <laughs> Like now I just heard people are the kids are putting a little stars on. <laughs> I just missed being born at the right time. <laughs> so, uh, and um, it was uh, he was it, it was in a flux because yes he was this was this is the Jew right this is the, at, at a time when it was the Jew was. There, you know, was tremendous anti-Semitism, and when he talked to me, you know, before I got it, I said, "Yeah, I grew up actually in L.A. and I grew up on a street where I was, you know, called Kike on a rather regular basis from my friends, uh, and, and that was when they got mad. They would to call me dirty Jew. This was in the fifties, and it was a, it was parts of L.A. that were very anti-Semitic. Uh, in fact, the L.A. Country Club." You couldn't get in there if you were a Jew. It may still be that way, in fact. <laughs> is, yeah. I want to ask you one. No, no, no. Sorry. Uh, everyone's happy. Don't apologize. One, qu one more question, and then I'll ask other people if they have questions. But do you remember um, when you saw it for the first time? You know, I I think this is the first time I've ever seen it with an audience. I know that he didn't uh, he didn't let us see any of the dailies uh, because he I'm 29 going on 30 playing a 21 year old and Bancroft is barely is about five years older than me <laughs> she's 35 <laughs> and that's what separated us was five years and I'm he's lighting me. You know, trying to make me look as young as possible, and he's lighting and to look as bad as possible. <laughs> she, she didn't succeed very good. She, she, she looks beautiful in this, but that's why he didn't allow. I learned later because she would have gone crazy because he was lighting her to look, you know, ten years older. Uh, Will you tell the story about when you saw it at the? I think was it the Greenwich with the theater when you went. And you hadn't seen it, you hadn't seen any of it before, and you went to the preview, I think, and you were sitting in the balcony? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, I think. We've been doing a lot of memoir talking. <laughs> um, it was... Uh, the first time, I think. Oh, the first. first time I saw the yeah. movie, yes. Uh, it, they told me about it. It's, there's going to be a screening of it. This is before it opened going to have one screening of it with the public, and it's 86th Street, Germantown. Germantown, I see. Ironically I enough. Right. And uh, so I go and I sit with uh, with my wife, I guess, I don't know if I was married yet, but we're in the balcony, and, uh, and I see the first shot, and I'm on the, you know, and the thing is, and I just started shaking uncontrollably. It's uh, it's very strange, you know, kind of something happens to you. It's not a good feeling, actually. It's just, and I couldn't stop shaking, and my teeth were actually all through the film. And uh, people started to leave, and I said, uh, I said, Anne, let's let's just l let everybody leave first. I I I, I was embarrassed. I don't even, uh, because I was in not good shape. I don't know why. Um, and after everyone has left, I start to say, okay, we can go out now, and we start to leave, and there's this woman uh, that's walking very slowly because she has a cane, so that's why she's like the last one to leave, but she's kind of walking down the stairs, and I, I see her, and she, just as she turns and looks at me. She says, are you the one that was the graduate? And I said, yeah. And she, I mean, these, 
surreal things, and she points her cane at me. And she says, your life will never be the same. <laughs> Couple questions, right? Okay. Yes. Um, so this this was my father's favorite film. It's my favorite film. He snuck out of boarding school in Beirut to go see it with his friends. Uh, this this is this was my father's favorite film and mine. And I have a question because I love every moment of the film. I have a question about the ending, yeah. the very last moment, yeah. because. In every other world, they would have gone out to live happily ever after. Yeah. But the ending seems to give us the question, what now? Because their expressions changed. And I'm yeah. curious whether that came up in rehearsal, or was that something during the shoot? Uh, 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 are you an actor? I'm, I'm a writer. Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, this was a case where we're, we have to do this stuff and that's Laverne, California, where that church is. And uh, that's the church they picked. I guess it's, it's so formidable looking. It's a church. And, and the Jews gonna run up there. This, this, is, this, is, this is Nichols, uh, you know. And uh, he said uh, to us, uh, oh, first of all, the critics all wrote that he was having this Christ-like position for them. The truth is, is that the reverend, or whatever, uh, you know, he, uh, he was furious because uh, he said, sure, you can come in and don't ever, when they say we're just going to use it for a few hours, don't ever say yes. <laughs> a crew of 50, 100 people are going to put holes into everything. I mean, it's, they're going to destroy your, your place. And that started to happen to this church. And he was really <laughs> furious. And by the third day, we get to the, the, wind, the, the thing. And he just starts screaming. He never dies. Get out, everybody! No. And uh, he it came down to the fact that the, the, the glass was a gift from someone. And it had a, a, a sentimental a value to him. And he and he was right because when I was hanging, uh, it, it was moving. And I thought, and I thought, you know, I might. I always say, bang harder, I could break the glass. And he says, out. And Nichols comes up to me and he says, is there any way you can do it so it's not breaking? And I said, well, you know, I don't. <laughs> and that's why I'm doing that. <laughs> it's not trying to, to, to be crushed. Religious. Uh, but uh, in terms of the question, uh, we, get, we get out and we're running to the the thing, oh, and the cross is there. That wasn't reversed. There was just a, there happened to be really a cross there. And, uh, you know, if I needed a weapon, I'd probably choose the cross. But that, that was not scripted or anything. I literally improvised, you know, just, he said, don't let anybody out. I didn't know how to hold them, and I just, uh, and we get to the bus, and we're now on the, on, on that bus, and we know it's the last scene, and we sit there in the back, he told us to sit in the, in the back, and uh, we hadn't rehearsed this, and, and you know, when we were rehearsing, because there was no lines, and he comes and he sits right out of, where the, like where the camera is, right next to the camera, you know, about that, that distance away. And we're just looking. And uh, he said, you know, don't, not to look at him, and we're not. He said, and just sit there. And he says, okay, uh, think about, uh, you know, one of the best things that ever happened to you in, in, your, in your life or something. Okay, now just uh, think, think about parts of yourself that you wish you could improve on what's the part of yourself that you hate the most all these questions that he was painting because he didn't know how he was going to end it and he was giving himself all these options in the cutting room
which is really what film uh, as an art form should be like. Everything is new. Uh, I can't prepare for this. I, I, I don't, I mean, I, I was looking forward to this, but I was still very uncertain of how I was going to feel. And it's so emotional for me. Uh, it's an extraordinary feeling, this accident of my life, uh, which it was. I mean, I'd ha I would have had a, another kind of life, but not this. She's right. She says, your life is never going to be the same. It's he, and I think of Nichols. I don't know if I've told you that in all our talks, but I think of him because he, uh, I, I, he, his death disturbed me. Uh, and uh, I think he said a uh, few months before he died, because he had kind of, you know, used drugs at a certain point and he had damaged him, himself. He said, you know, I wish I hadn't, you know, screwed up my body so much, because he, he, he knew he was dying. I think he. Ten days before he died, he had just gotten a pace, a pace, uh, whatever it's called, and uh, and I, for some reason, uh, he's been in my consciousness, and I I walk out in the morning, and because I'm going toward eighty seven, and uh, and I go out in the morning, you know, to get the take the dog out, and I look up at the sky. And I literally look at the sky, and I think of Mike would give anything just to be able to be doing this now. Mm -hmm. And I think, mm -hmm. I look at a tree, Mike would do anything mm -hmm. just to see that tree and to examine it. Mm -hmm. I constantly am doing this. He, he, uh, he altered my life. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, and he, and he did it out of such Bravery. There's no other word for it. Uh, I saw, and I must say, I, I would urge you to see it. It just goes into my head now. Uh, I saw uh, a Little Richard. Uh, there's been a few, but there's the latest one, which I think is uh, Netflix. And if you haven't seen it, it's a remarkable experience because it tells you as much about America as it does about Little Richard who was this extraordinary talent, who, who was uh, openly gay, extremely brave in the 50s, and that one of his friends that's interviewed, uh, who's also gay, is, is, says a very brilliant thing when they cut back and forth. He says, he says Richard was, was, was openly gay in the 50s, and what's behind his life is violence. That's what's behind being gay, is violence. Because that's what's going on then, in, in, in those days. Everything, you faggot, you know, and getting, he got beat up at times, and he was open about it. He was a very brave guy, and also, they have these intercuts of people like uh, David Bowie and, and uh, Mick Jagger, they said, he he he's, he gave us he he had the most in, in, impact on us when we were starting out. He was the one. That's who we were trying to be. We were trying to be. Uh, it, it's it, it's wonderful to see because you see the country, you see the split in the country, which is really not disappeared. But and and you, it made you think of Nichols' bravery. Yeah. Well, Nichols makes you think of little of, of little Richard, <laughs> in, the, in the sense, in the sense yes. of being being who they are and put, putting themselves yes. out there and taking these giant giant well, risks. Well, look, I mean, that was we were uh, we were in a rather anti-Semitic time in, yeah. in the in the fifties, uh, and he was he was he was who he was. Yeah, and he was and he was challenging, the, uh, you know. He was challenging uh, the idea of Christianity. Uh, you know, we killed Jesus. Well, Jesus was a Jew. <laughs> you know, and uh, and that's always. I don't think that's gone anywhere. It just stays there, just like the Civil War has never really ended either. <laughs>
<laughs> I want to take, do we have time for two more? Is two good? All right. Uh, yes, right? Yes, you, uh, okay. right there. Yes. Um, I'm curious with the gift of, the wonderful gift of time, 55, 56 years now, when you revisit this film, something you made before you were married, before you had children, when you see it now, after children, after grandchildren, do you see... I'm sure you see something different than the rest of us. Do you see, like, your children, your grandchildren, other family members' expressions? I'm just curious, revisiting this, what kind of things come to your mind with this wonderful gift of time to reflect on it? Well, my, my, uh, my granddaughter's here tonight, and she's sitting next to me. <laughs> To the bathroom. To the bathroom too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I said, Did I say that right? No, no, no she went to the bathroom. Wife is here. I'm here, and my and I keep looking at my eyes. Look at Daisy. Look at Daisy. Daisy just started uh, uh, prep school from from uh, Minneapolis. And uh, had so, you seen it before? I think she had seen it before. She's, not, she's in the bathroom? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Boy, she's going to regret that. <laughs> uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if I really understood the, the question. It's... Uh... How has time changed your view of this movie? Is that, is that a fair way to... Well, it's just that when I look at old photos of my, of my life and my family, I see since then, like... Other family members reflected in them. And I'm just curious if you see. Do you see other? Do you see other of your own family members reflected in, in this movie? Do you see, like, for instance, your brother? Do you see him in Benjamin? Well, that's a quick story. I can, yeah. I'm taking up too much time, but uh, and my wife. Uh, she says, be careful. Anything you say in one second goes around the world. <laughs> and it's out of context. <laughs> Tell him about Ronnie. My, he said to me one day. Uh, Nichols. That, oh, that's what I forgot. That's, I'm, that's, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. We're rehearsing, and he takes me, yes, thank you. Uh, he takes me aside, Mike, and he says, uh, after he asked me about the, being a virgin, and he says, did you, did you have any heroes? When you were a, a kid, who was you like in the movies? I said, kind of. I said, I when I saw, I didn't have a good. I would consider my brother and I didn't have a very good upbringing, and I would never want to repeat it. Uh, it, it and and it, it doesn't sound like much. It didn't feel like much fun uh, growing up, but uh, I remember as a kid seeing this film, The Yearling. And Gregory Peck was with the deer, and I wanted Gregory Peck to be my father so bad because he looked. Oh man, he was friends with the deer. He was friends with the kid. I think it was Brandon DeWilda, wonderful uh, uh, kid actor. Uh, but he said, "Do you have anyone else was your hero in, in real life?" And I said, "My brother. My 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 brother's almost seven years older, and it's just the two of us." And so I never felt like he was a brother because he was like, it was like a third parent. Yeah. So in a sense, I was like the only kid and I was always trying to imitate my brother. And my brother was the opposite of me. I was, you know, ADD is a kind of nice way to put it, but I, I, <laughs> I couldn't concentrate on anything. I was out the window sitting in class daydreaming, you know, and my brother was a straight A student and he was, only five foot five and a, and a half, but he was on the, you know, varsity uh, football team, varsity baseball team. He was a great athlete and a straight eight. I mean, he was the winner, and uh, I was programmed, uh, you know, to be uh, the loser in a sense. <laughs> and I think maybe that's one of the reasons I got depressed because my plan didn't work. <laughs> I wanted to please my father by staying a loser. <laughs> Something stopped. Well, you failed at that. <laughs> but, uh, so I said I would imitate my brother when we were rehearsing, and he said, uh, so why don't you do the scene again? It's a scene with uh, uh, Anne Bancroft, I think, uh, the one in the, maybe in the restaurant, uh, and uh, and I did it, and, uh, and, he, and he 
said, okay. He says, uh, we'll do it again. He says, oh, did your brother ever, how was he when he was uptight? Did you ever see him uptight? I said, yeah. He says, well, what did he do? I says, well, I, I really, you know, I would answer the phone and I could pretend like I was my brother when the girls would call to talk to him and I could get away with it. And I was, you know, I knew how he would answer. I, I mean, I, I observed him a lot. And I said when he was uptight, he would stop breathing. I could tell when he was pissed off at me. He just, you know, no, there was no air coming in or out. And, uh, and then after a while, he continued to be pissed off. He would, there would be this, <clears throat> and he said, so do the scene like that. And I did it like that. And then he said, okay, now just do the scene again and forget about all of that and just see what essence remains of, this is a wonderful director. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, mm. was born. <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Yes, uh, uh, I wish I knew your name. I would clear up the confusion. There's a young woman, right? Yes. There. No, unfortunately. <laughs> but, yes. A young man, yes. I have to pay tribute and ask a question real quick. The day that you won the Academy Award for Kramer versus Kramer, coming from New York. This is emotional for me to talk about. And you inspired me as an artist. Can you hear me? And you were saying goodbye to Justin on the plane. Sorry. And do you do you do you think you could ask a question? Yes. And okay. I want to just skip tribute real quick. Okay. He walked me, Dustin, you walked me all the way out the airport oh. and encouraged me as an artist. Oh. And I never forgot it. And I became a successful artist. And so one of the questions I have, I just wanted to pay that tribute. Thank you. He was saying that you walked him out of the airplane and encouraged him to be an artist. The whole way. And, and he has now since become one. Yeah. Why did I encourage him to be an artist? Let's take it back. I'm drawing on a point in the question is, Now your question. Here's the question. Uh, something different the way you felt when you were younger compared to what you think uh, you changed when you got older. In something in in life, yes. Something that you thought was true when you were younger, important, important when you were younger, that you now believe is not important. Not changed. important. <laughs> That's a big. <laughs> you know, anybody here who's in my uh, generation, and there's a there's a there's a little bit of gray around. Uh, it. The, the truth of it is, especially well, people, some people, uh, Europeans say, particularly in this country, you're either you know pissed off about what you did wrong, you know, yesterday, and what you have to do right, and what you didn't do, and what you're gonna do. That you're either living in the past in a negative sense, fuck that up, fuck that up, and then what you want to do, I gotta do this, I want to do this, but you're you're not in the moment much. And uh, I do not want to go back. Uh, I think about it, but I think you lead kind of different lives. You know, you're a baby and then you're walking. I have grandkids, you know, they're, they're a different person once they start to walk. They're a different person when they can start to communicate. And that period of my life wasn't fun. Uh, and so I have no desire to relive the past. Uh, it was a, a painful past. And, uh, and in a sense right now is the best time of my life because I know that, that you know, I know that, uh, that I have a, my life is limited now. I have a limited amount of time. And so if not now, when? And so I really do feel that I'm full of, of, of what we all would like to be full of, and that is, you know, the, the moment, uh, my, my family. God bless my family. Um, that's not what you meant. <laughs> He's getting
giving the thumbs up. Yeah. Dustin? Yeah.